In today's video, we are going to go over the basics of modeling ceilings in Revit. If you are new, I am the Real BIM Lady. I post weekly videos on using Revit out of the box with no plugins. The intent of my videos is to teach residential architects switching from AutoCAD the basics of using Revit to be successful. Before we get into modeling ceilings, let's go over the view to model ceilings in. You will notice if we go over to our project browser, we have a category for ceiling plans. So if you have one of these created already, you can double click on them. Alternatively, if you go to the view tab under plan views, you'll see that you have an option here to create a reflected ceiling plan. And then you can select the level in which you're creating the ceiling plan for. The difference between floor plans and ceiling plans, which you probably already know, but in far, as far as Revit goes, in a floor plan, there is a cut plane through the middle of the floor plan and you're looking down at the floor. For ceiling plans, Revit knows that it's a reflected ceiling plan and so the cut plane will be wherever you specify and then look, it will be looking up at the ceiling. So if I go over to my properties palette and I select view range, you can see that my cut plane is at seven foot six and then I'm looking up all the way up to 22 feet. So this is my view range here is from seven foot six all the way up to 22 feet. So to get started, you wanna to go to your architecture tab and click on the ceiling tool. In the properties dropdown, you can select the ceiling that you want. We have two options here. We have a basic ceiling and a compound ceiling. I like to always urge people to use the compound ceiling. The difference between compound ceiling and basic ceiling is compound ceiling has an actual thickness to it, whereas a basic ceiling doesn't have a, th a thickness to it. You simply put it in your model to maybe call out a height. So it'll just be more realistic. You, know, you generally wanna build re your Revit model like it's building in the field in real life. So compound ceiling is actually going to give it its thickness. So if I don't see something here that I like, I'm going to go to 5 8 chipboard. Then you can click edit type and duplicate. Let's say we want to make this half inch chipboard. And OK. And under structure, you want to click edit. You will notice this looks really familiar now if you've been going through the videos and you've watched the videos on walls and you've watched the videos on floors, then this assembly, it is the same as the floor and the wall assembly. So this is similar to walls and floors as well. You can insert a layer and change it to whatever it might be, structure, substrate, or finish, and then add a material, move that layer up or down depending on where it needs to be. For this example, we will just leave it as half inch chipboard and press OK and OK again. And now we have two options. We have automatic ceiling and we have sketch ceiling. So automatic ceiling, what it's on right now, you can hover your mouse into an enclosed area and you can see the red line coming up there. So Revit will determine the boundary of your ceiling and place the ceiling automatically. This is really handy if you have multiple rooms. You can click, 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 and then all of your rooms will be placed really quickly. However, it may not be the correct boundary that you want. So kind of by default, I'm always selecting sketch ceiling so I know that it's gonna be the right boundary. Again, like floors, we have our draw tools here. Pick walls. This tool right here will associate the ceiling to the wall. So if you use this, and notice we have an option here to extend into walls core. Let's show you what that does. That way when I click on the wall, that magenta line is actually at the core of the wall. Whereas when that is unclicked and I click on the wall, it's at the finish. See the difference there? So depending on where you want to model your walls to, I like to model my walls to the core. So I'm always selecting this button, extend to wall core, and I click around 
and now I have an enclosed boundary. So the boundary must be enclosed in order to create a ceiling. And just like floors, if you want a hole in the ceiling, you can do another enclosed boundary in the middle of it. And then to end, green check mark. Now if we didn't have this void in the middle, it's really hard to see that you placed the ceiling. So what I have done to help out is if you change your view to a shaded view, then it's really easy to tell where you've put your ceilings. I have gone into each material and applied a color, a different color, to show up depending on what the material is. For example, if I do another material like type X chipboard, I've made that material green in a shaded view. And so it's really easy to tell where I have different materials in that shaded view. You want to pay attention to the, to the height as well. So when you're sketching your ceiling, you want your level to be at the level of the floor plan, and then you manually input the height that that ceiling will be. And then your tags will pick up that the ceiling is eight feet high. So you'll see when I move this wall, since I use the pick wall command, when I move this wall, the ceiling moves with it, which is very handy and eliminates some potential rework if your walls move. A couple other things with ceilings. If you go to, if you need to edit your ceiling, you click edit boundary, and I'm just gonna delete the, this thing. You can add a slope to your ceiling. And over here, you put what the slope is. So if I just left that at one, I draw a section through it. You can see that my ceiling has, is sloping down. Something else you can do, if you click on an edge, you can click define slope, and then you can actually put a rise over run slope indicated here. So let's make that three over 12. And then I will draw a section, check that out. So you can see that I have a three over 12 slope. So that is the very basics of ceilings. In the next video, we're gonna go over roofs. Roofs in Revit can be a lot easier than roofs in AutoCAD. I am excited to show you. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.